Hey everybody, it's a dark nasty rainy day outside so I decided I would stay in here and make a mess all day. I'm making some toolboxes and per request of my number one biggest greatest fan, I need to show my face in my videos. So here we are. <laughs> I want to show you this thing today. The idea was not mine, in fact it's probably thousands of years old. But I got the idea from Tojio Odade's book, Japanese Woodworking Tools. And here you can see planing beam supported by a triangular strut thing and this little block hanging off the side for jointing edges. And then for the, the wood stop, he shows these two ways of doing it. One is with just nails bent over each other. I can really see that happening on a job site. And then a little more formal, you have a block of wood with nails coming up out of it. And I imagine you can move this stop up and down depending on the thickness of your work. At the dumb end of the beam I made this little sawtooth, I just filed it with a saw file. It's a little steel stop and it's uh, really thin, that's why I made it of steel. I wanted something thin and hard so I could plane pieces that were really thin down to an eighth inch or so. Was that five millimeters, four millimeters, something like that. And then at the smart end, we have this arrangement. And this is still probably not original, but it works really well. It slides to clamp your workpiece. And this is basically a mirror image of the stop at the other end. And it's held in place with this wedge. Obviously, if you drove this wedge in really tight, it would split the beam. But I don't, and it holds the work plenty well. The stop is held to this wedge, it's just riveted, so I put some nails through there and then peened over the top side, and that way I can keep a really low profile and it's stronger than screws. I'll show it in action here. Alright, I'll show you a couple different things here. So if I wanted to score the edge of this for a rabbit, I guess it would be. Pretty easy to score it deep like that. And then suppose I want to play this piece. Just grab it here. idea. This one's not very straight, but we can try to joint it. If the board is really long, it's kind of cumbersome to hold, hold it against the plane as you joint the whole thing. This board doesn't really show that very well because it's short, but I'll try to show you here. See, I'm sort of using it backwards because I'm using Western planes instead of Japanese ones. Yeah, there you go. It's also really nice for laying out uh, panels and stuff with a marking gauge. You can, you can easily put a board in sideways. Like so. Yeah, it holds it pretty good. You might be thinking that's all well and good. I never use hand tools. What the heck would I need this thing for? And I will admit this sits in the corner in the closet about 29 days out of the month. And I have another one outside that I use about every other day.
I'm often ripping down uh, two by stock and all sorts of things with the circular saw. And especially big boards, I find it's a lot easier to use the circular saw than try to wrestle it over a table saw. Not to mention, I don't even have a table saw here. So yeah, instead of this uh, formal arrangement, I'll just put a, a block at the end. I'll screw a little piece in here that sticks up that the blade can cut through um, so it won't get in my way. And then uh, some have left-handed, some have right-handed circular saws, but the rip guide on mine is usually on this side unless I'm cutting a real wide piece. So I put stops on the opposing side of the planing beam. So in this case, they'd be here and here every two feet or so. And then I can put the saw in there and rip pushing against the stops all the way. And it's easy and accurate and um, it's a really simple setup really. You can just screw together a little triangle support like Toshio showed. And this end set on a cinder block or a chunk of wood or whatever you can find, a step maybe. So yeah, this is just a really useful shape and hopefully that gives you some idea of what you can do with it.